Um, I know it's been a while. I um, had uh, some challenges with uh, the audio of um, my laptop, but um, I think I've sorted that out now. I hope you can hear me loud and clear. I hope you guys are well. Uh, keeping strong. As I keep saying, it won't be long now. Um, <clears throat> the 10th of Nissan, as I said, um, I had hoped that it would be the 10th of Nissan 5781, but based on uh, new information, uh, it's obvious that it's uh, 10th of Nissan 5782. So, you have a year to go out there and evangelize and do all the things that God would have you do. And I pray that God will strengthen you all to go out there and do what you need to do. Um, anyone that doesn't realize that the Lord Jesus is almost here just isn't looking around. So, um, yeah, today I just thought I'd come on here and uh, look at this iPad Goats um, 3 animation. However, we're going to start off by looking at iPad Goat uh, 2, the end and the emergence of the Antichrist, in inverted commas, because this character, who is supposedly the Antichrist, um, there might be a lot more to this than... Uh, meets the eye. So we're going to start off by just watching the end of the iPad Goat 2 animation, and then we'll watch the iPad Goat 3 animation, and then I'll go into the analysis. Okay.
So, <clears throat> excuse me. So we start off at the point of the emergence of the Antichrist in inverted commas. Um, this character on the screen is supposed to represent the Antichrist. Um, from the iPad Goat 2 animation, we can see that he emerges from the depths in the canoe, um, supposedly be, you know, being ferried from the underworld to this realm. Okay, and in this scene, he's just been birthed out of the underworld into the earth. Um, uh, however, he hasn't uh, manifested himself yet. <clears throat> now, there's something I want you to note here. So, if you look at this figure, you can see the um, pyramid on his forehead, which is symbolism that is associated with the Antichrist. You see the all-seeing eye on his forehead, also symbolism that's associated with the Antichrist. However, he has a crown of thorns on his head. Now, if I remember correctly, there's only one character in history that had a crown of thorns uh, put on his head, and that is uh, our Yeshua our Lord and Saviour. Okay, so this character has a crown of thorns on his head, but he is being depicted as the Antichrist. So, if this character is Yeshua, why is someone trying to depict Yeshua, our Lord and Saviour, as the Antichrist? So, in this scene, we see the church behind him, and he's still wearing the, the crown, because Yeshua is still in sackcloth. He's before the throne in heaven, interceding on our behalf. And his intercession will carry on until the fullness of the Gentiles comes in. And once the fullness of the Gentiles has come in, um, Yeshua will rapture his church. Okay? Now, it is only when he raptures his church, and you can see this scene in the book of Zechariah in chapter 3, after he raptures his church is when his iniquity, because remember the Bible says that he was made sin for us so that we could become the righteousness of God in him. So it is when, after the rapture has occurred, that Yeshua's sin will be taken away from him, and he will be given righteous robes, and he will be made high priest, judge, and king. Okay? Which is the first thing that happens when we get to heaven, the coronation service. So this scene is depicting the transition, uh, the point where the church is raptured out, because the, the the church of God, the building, cannot collapse, uh, save the spirit of God has been taken out of the earth. So, this is talking about the transition from when the church is taken out of the earth into the, the sixth seal. So you see, the transition has begun. The church is crumbling you have the crown of thorns has disappeared because when Yeshua gets to heaven as I said earlier on his his sins um, because he was made sin for us his sins will be taken away from him and then he will be crowned so this is speaking of that transition so the church crumbles because the Spirit of God has been taken out of it. The, the, the church has been raptured out. Okay, There's no crown of thorns. But now, this, is, this scene depicts the uh, sixth seal. You can see the stars falling from the heavens. And the stars fall and they strike the pyramid, which is the symbol of the Antichrist. The, 
going all the way back to Egypt, Babylon, the ziggurats, the, the, the pyramids, it's all the same source. So, this is speaking of when the wrath of God arrives, and, and his wrath starts to dismantle the architecture of, of the Antichrist, and the, and the Antichrist system, the beast system on the earth which is uh, predominantly symbolized by the by the pyramid so you can see this uh, figure in the canoe are you sure is, is they're trying desperately to to show him or depict him as the antichrist so you can see the fire burning under his 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 legs um, Burning, burning his feet and and his legs. In other words, the phoenix. They're trying to portray him as the phoenix, the one that rises out of the abyss. Of course, the canoe represents, you know, the rising out of the out of the underworld, the beast from out of the sea. But they're trying to depict Ah Yeshua as the beast from out of the sea. So there's the destruction of the of the pyramid system which is what Yeshua is coming to do, although for a period he will allow the Antichrist to take control of the earth because that is what humans want. They do not want Yeshua. They reject Yeshua at every chance. So they will get a chance to have the one that they want, the Antichrist. So you see all the pyramids destroyed there. Now we come into the iPad Go 3 animation. And we have the duel between Trump and Biden, of course. And all around is is chaos. And we, we can see the beginnings of the death of Babylon. And you can see the dollar bills. Speaking of the stimulus packages. The stimulus packages which will continue until the economy of Neo-Babylon is totally destroyed. The economy of Neo Egypt, the economy of Neo Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, and you see them uh, dueling on top of this Chinese building. In other words, um, China will be a major bone of contention. Of course, Trump confronted China with his uh, trade wars and. And Biden will be forced to confront China, the rise of China, which I believe is what will lead to the well, one of the things that will lead to the Third World War. Now, beside them here, you have the pyramid, of course. Uh, that's the symbolism of the Antichrist. You have the all-seeing eye, so the symbol of, symbolism of the Antichrist. And... Um, this uh, period is also marked uh, by the pandemic, the the um, coronavirus uh, pandemic. And we come to this scene. Now, if you look carefully here, it's the same figure um, that emerged at the end of iPad Goat 2. And um, here, you see he no longer has a crown of thorns. He now has a, a crown. And this is because, as I said earlier on, when Yeshua, when, when we arrive heaven with Yeshua, Yeshua will be crowned. Okay, And after he's crowned, he will crown the overcomers, that's the believers. And then Yeshua will leave the heavens and come down to the earth to judge the earth now when Yeshua comes down to uh, comes back down to the earth he's coming back with his 144,000 redeemed warriors who are going to do battle on earth who are the first fruit of the redeemed uh, children of Jacob the children of Jacob who will be redeemed during the time of Jacob's trouble the, first, the 144,000 first fruits symbolize the first fruit of that harvest that will happen during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? So here, Yeshua, 
Ah Yeshua is being depicted as the Antichrist, the Islamic Antichrist. They call him al Messiah Dajjal. And they will convince the whole world that our Yeshua is al Messiah Dajjal. Because when Yeshua returns, Yeshua is returning as a lion. He's returning as a very fierce lion who will judge the children of Israel and who will judge the inhabitants of the earth. So p people will see him uh, as this evil character. Remember in the story of of um, Joseph, when Joseph, uh, when his brothers came to Egypt during the time of the famine, and they met Joseph, they didn't see Joseph as this uh, agreeable uh, character. They saw Joseph as this evil uh, ruler. And true to scripture, this is what will happen when Yeshua returns after the rapture. So, their al at Dajjal is our Yeshua. And uh, this is uh, when Yeshua arrives after the rapture, when he comes down with his arrows, the 144,000 first fruits. Then the Lord will appear over them. His arrow will flash like lightning. The sovereign Lord will sound the trumpet. He will march in the storms of the south, and the Lord Almighty will shield them. They will destroy and overcome with sling stones. They will drink and roar as with wine. They will be full like a bowl used for sprinkling the corners of the altar. Zechariah 9 verse 14 to 15. This is when Yeshua arrives, and he does battle with the enemies of Israel. So, al messi at the jail. You see, because when Yeshua comes back, he will manifest on the first of Elul. And then on the first of Tishri, he will go into the temple, the newly built temple in Yerushalayim, and proclaim himself to be the Messiah. But as I said, uh, the Muslims would have convinced everyone that he is al messi at the jail, and because, of course, he will be a fierce king, he will be rejected once more. Now, so you can see Yeshua being depicted here as, as the Antichrist. All the symbolism of the real Antichrist, they are associating with Yeshua because they want people to believe when Yeshua arrives that in actual fact, he is the Antichrist. And then they will portray the real Antichrist, the Mahdi, as, as uh, the 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 Christ. Uh, so here you can see the eye of Osiris. This is going back all the way to Egypt. It's the same symbolism that the pyramids. It's the same spirit that keeps coming back. The spirit of Cain. The spirit that came back as Nimrod. The spirit that came that keeps coming back. He will come back, and he will manifest a total of eight times. And it is during his eighth manifestation and he will be destroyed. However, they're trying to depict our Yeshua as the Antichrist. Do you see what they're trying to do? These are the 144,000, so they're going to portray him as, as a, a dictator because he's returning with these warriors, these 144,000. Now we, we come to this scene where this individual... Uh, stumbles and, and falls over and dies. Uh, so this whole scene is speaking of death. So after the, 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 the rapture, because at this point you see the, the sixth seal is what, what we're observing. You can see the stars falling from heaven. You can see the fiery red dragon. And this symbolizes death. Okay, the, the pale horse rider. Um, he, he's dancing, so he's having a field day. There's death everywhere. People are dying. You can see graves, and it just speaks of a time of death and destruction. And of course, the Eiffel Tower is struck here by a plane, so this speaks of um, war. So, that, so as at the time, uh, during the time of the Sixth Seal and after the time of the Sixth Seal, the wars will continue to, to rage, because I think just before the Sixth Seal, uh, is open, the Third World War will will be unleashed upon the earth, and there will be uh, pestilence and, and plagues. Now, this gentleman is is dead. He falls over, and he actually 
dies. Okay, and it's interesting that um, after he dies, okay. So, of course, uh, as I said, the Eiffel Tower is, is destroyed, so this speaks of war affecting uh, France, um, because apparently the, the, one of the things that will ignite the Third World War is a, a war between Turkey and, and the European Union. So this depicts uh, serious damage occurring in, in France. Of course, the Christians would have been raptured by, by this point. So we still have death here dancing, having a field day. Now it's funny you you see this uh, a syringe that comes down from above and is injected into this uh, character, this this human who 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 fell over and, and died. And uh, um, it's 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 funny because this alludes to the vaccine. However, you don't give vac vaccines to people. After, uh, after they've died, you administer vaccines before. In fact, in order to prevent death. So, this vaccine is being administered after death. In other words, you know the the point would be to reverse the. Uh, phenomenon of death, of death, and if you look carefully at the syringe, you can see written on it is six six six. That is the mark of the beast. So is this speaking of? Because the mark of Christ gives us eternal life. So I would presume that the mark of the beast would give us eternal damnation. Could this be the reason why in Revelation 9 it speaks of uh, men will look for death and not find it, men would seek death and death will flee from them? Doesn't it sound to you like uh, the living dead? So, the earth will be populated with the living dead because remember the bible also says that they will hear his voice and some will come forth to everlasting life and some will come forth to everlasting um everlasting shame and contempt the living dead could this be the reason for this craze with the zombies, the zombie apocalypse? Is this what's coming? So we move to the next scene, and then we have the phoenix, the fiery bird, the beautiful fiery Arabian bird, carrying um, a cradle. And... He, the the bird flies and and sets the cradle down on this on this building, and we go into the eye of the baby in the cradle, and, and the the we emerge out of the eye of the uh, leader, the one who is who is leading the salat, the Islamic uh, prayer at the Hagia Sophia, and only one will lead. The Salat, and he is the Imam Mahdi, the the real Antichrist, who is depicted here leading the Salat. Imam Al Mahdi, the Antichrist, the cursed, marked, and hidden one, who will now be revealed. And of course, he is leading the prayer um, at the Hagia Sophia, because one of the things the the uh, Muslims believe is that um, after the Great War, the Malhama, they will conquer um, Istanbul. They will conquer Turkey. 
um, without having to kill anyone. And at this point, Turkey will become a militant Islamic state. So they will be praying in the Hagia Sophia. Now, in contrast, you have the uh, one they refer to as Al Messiah Dajjal, that's our Yeshua, being depicted as the Antichrist. And they're depicting him as, as um, having this, you know, his throne in this in this dark, dreary pyramid um, structure. You know, and they're depicting the, uh, an alien spaceship above above his his uh, his his throne uh because they're trying to associate they they try to associate yeshua our yeshua with all the negatives so they try to associate him with the aliens they try to associate him with the negatives of the pyramid the eye of horus and all of that because they uh, they will want everyone to believe that he is al masi ah dajjal They want everyone to believe that he's our Messiah at the job. So, as you can see, uh, Yeshua here being depicted as our Messiah at the job. You can see the serpent by his throne. And they will, as they have stated in the Islamic eschatology, that Dajjal will, will arise and he will go after the Antichrist, that's the, the Mahdi, when he arrives in order to do battle with him. Of course, you have the 144,000 here being depicted as his, his um, dictatorial warriors. Now, we cut to this scene that speaks of the um, Ark of the Covenant. So, by the looks of it, the Ark of the Covenant will be discovered in uh, this Hagia Sophia. Uh, and It'll be brought out and opened, and it'll be inside of it. There will be um, a copy of a of the Torah, according to the Islamic eschatology, that uh, basically goes along with their teaching. That uh, in the original Torah, that it states that uh, Muhammad is the messenger of God. So this is the spirit of Antichrist. And you can see the Mahdi telling the whole world, holding a press conference, telling the whole world that this this um, manuscript that's been discovered is the original manuscript, and it states that Muhammad is the messenger of God. So they will effectively convince the world that Muhammad is the true messenger of God, and that this document is the, is the true. Torah. Okay. The spirit of deception is the spirit of Antichrist. They'll convince the world that the information in the Gospels of Barnabas uh, are true. Now we move to this seed where we have a, new, a different character. And this character is um Isa the false prophet okay in revelation in revelation uh 13 there are two characters okay uh so you have the beast from out of the sea and you have the beast from out of the earth the first beast from out of the sea is the antichrist the beast the mamahdi the second is the beast from out of the earth which is the false prophet Isa. Now he is the warrior. He is the war, the 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 warmonger. He is the one who 
who he's the enforcer for the for the Mahdi. Uh, and the reason is because the spirit behind this false prophet is Azazel. Uh, if you read the book of Enoch, it tells you that Azazel was uh, it's a fallen angel that came to the earth and taught men how to make swords and all kinds of uh, tools and implements for war. And uh, the, the earth was, was corrupted by Azazel, and the, um, the children of men complained, and the angels complained to the Lord, and the, therefore the Lord asked them to bind Azazel and cast him into the abyss uh, in a place called Dudael. Uh, which today is in a place called Napta Playa, and it says that jagged rocks should be placed uh, over him, uh, and he should be left there until the very end, when he will be summoned. So, if you go to the furthest parts of the rivers of Egypt, a place called Napta Playa, you will see uh, um, a place in the wilderness where you have jagged rocks. Um, I believe that is Dudael, the entrance to the abyss where um, Azazel was bound and kept until this, until, until these days. So Easter depicted here with a bow and arrow shoots at this eagle which represents uh, Babylon Babylon USA uh, so he shoots this eagle and this eagle um, crashes and dies in front of this uh, nightclub which is being used to represent uh, Babylon USA as they believe that Babylon USA is corrupt and and full of evil. And you have the side there, democracy, that this is what their democracy is all about. This is all their freedom is all about. It's it's all about debauchery and evil and and you know and all the other all the other things associated with with Babylon USA. So they they're depicting the end of Babylon USA. You can see the sign is is broken. The, the freedom is broken, their democracy is broken. So they're telling us that at this point, um, at the point of the arrival of of the prophet, of the false prophet Isa, is when the death or final death of Neo Babylon will take place. So we have this uh, constellation, which it is the uh, constellation Virgo. Uh, so the uh, Virgo normally represents the time of the year which is in September. And this corresponds with the beginning of the uh, Shpita year. The Shpita year, I'm oh, sorry, the, the end of of the Shemitah year. The Shemitah year begins September 2021 and ends September 2022, which is the year of the fall, or the beginning of the fall of the Babylon. So this is saying that by September, by the end of September 2022, the Babylon will be, will be finished. Now we come to this scene that uh, takes us to these verses in the, uh, Quran and the first one reads Lo, this verily is the true narrative, there is no Allah save Allah, and lo Allah he verily is the mighty the wise okay, so they just basically they basically want to convince the world that Allah is the way Allah is the true God the second uh, pa passage and second verse Reads, uh, it's the in the found in Surah Al Imran Ayat 64, which says, "O people of the Scripture, come, that's the Jews and the Christians, come to an agreement between us and you, that we shall worship none but Allah, 
and that we shall ascribe no partner unto him, and that none of us shall take others for lords beside Allah. And if they turn away, they say, bear witness that we are they who have surrendered unto him. So they, it's the same thing. Uh, remember what the Bible says that what who what what is the spirit of Antichrist? The spirit of Antichrist denies the, the he who denies the sonship of Yeshua it has the spirit of Antichrist, and that's basically what they what they say here. They, they you should ascribe no partner unto Allah, and and basically this is what they will try to convince the world of that because uh, when their their false prophet Isa comes, he will claim to be our Yeshua, and he will tell them that. He will tell the world that he uh, didn't ask anyone to worship him, that he didn't say that he was the son of God, and that and then he would break the cross and kill the believers. And we move on to this scene, this uh, high tech scene with the with the flying cars, and we see the uh, World Bank. Presume that this is this is the headquarters of the World Bank, and in front of the headquarters of the World Bank, we have this golden bull, the golden calf, the the idol of Neo Babylon. Okay, the god of money, and we see here uh, the prophetessa with a sword, and we see the beginnings of the destruction of. The Neo Babylon, the continuation of the destruction of Neo Babylon with the dollar bills, dollar bills are raining down from the sky, helicopter money. So we're talking about hyperinflation now. The Neo Babylon, one of the things that will destroy Neo Babylon is the is the uh, hyperinflation of the currency, the the debasement of the currency, which will find rapid acceleration in the Shemitah year. So here the World Bank is still open for business. We have the Golden Calf. Of course, the Prophet Isa comes along and he chops off the head of the Golden Calf, killing the, the idol. And as he does that, the level of helicopter money increases dramatically and the lights at the World Bank go out signifying the end of the current financial system. The prophet Isa, the false prophet of Revelation 13. So here we have uh, dollars raining down from the sky, as I said, the, the debasement of the currency, leading to hyperinflation. A trillionaire familiar. And um Vestati Somos. So it's basically speaking of the end of the dollar, the death of the dollar. And we, we have here this this character who's dressed like a, a slave of old, and he's, it, it, it speaks to me, it seems to be speaking of the time of the liberation of the slaves, the liberation of the slaves, in inverted commas, the black population of, of Neo-Babylon. Okay, I think this speaks to the verse in the Bible in Zechariah, chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, where it says, For thus says the Lord of hosts, He sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you. For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. For surely I will shake my hand against them, and they shall become spoil for their servants. That's Babylon shall become spoil for their servants, in inverted commas. Their slaves? Perhaps this is the time that the that the African Americans, the descendants of the slaves, will be liberated from the grip of Babylon USA. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me, Zechariah 2, verse 8 and 9. So, the debasement of the currency, trillionaire, 
familia. The death of the dollar. And Vestati Sumus. Now, Vestati Sumus, this is a reference to Micah chapter 2 and verse 4. In that day shall one take a parable against you and lament with a doleful lamentation and say, We be utterly spoilt. He hath changed the portion of my people. How hath he removed it from me? Turning away he hath divided our fields. And this speaks of when the Antichrist basically divides the land of Israel. Because at the beginning of the time of Jacob's trouble, they will sign a covenant um, of peace, a covenant with death, according to Isaiah verse 28. And so, the Midway through the time of Jacob's trouble, the Antichrist will will invade Jerusalem, and he will divide. He will divide Jerusalem. He will divide the land, and this is what this Vestati Sumus is alluding to. Okay, for a voice of wailing is heard out of Zion. How are we spoiled? So, we, how are we spoiled? Mestati Shumus. The Antichrist will divide the land of Israel. Another version. In that day, people will ridicule you. That's Israel. They will taunt you with this mournful song. We are utterly ruined. My people's possession is divided up. He takes it from me. He assigns our fields to traitors. Micah 2 verse 4. Another version. In that day, they shall take up a taunt against you and moan bitterly and say, we are utterly ruined. He changes the portion of my people, how he removes it from me to an apostate. He allots our fields. Micah 2 verse 4. In that day shall one take up a parable against you and lament with a doleful lamentation and say we have we we be utterly spoilt. He hath changed the portion of my people. How hath he removed it from me? Turning away, he hath divided our fields. Mike two verse four. Because at the beginning of the time of Jacob's trouble. The children of Jacob, having been gathered back to the land of Israel, when their Messiah appears to them, the real Messiah, Yeshua, will be convinced by the Muslims that the real Yeshua, the real Messiah, is al Messiah at And so they will reject the real Messiah, al Messiah at and turn to the false messiah, Imam Mahdi, and the false prophet, the prophet Isa. And that is why the next scene here depicts the flag of Israel changing to an Islamic flag. Because the children of Israel will actually turn and accept the God of Islam. The same way they rejected the Lord during the time of the first exodus and worshipped the golden calf is the same way they will reject Yeshua and turn to Allah. And that is why you see the flag here, Islamic flag here, flying over the newly built Jerusalem, the newly built temple in Jerusalem. And this is the actual reason for the time of Jacob's trouble. You see, at the beginning, at, at this point now, Yeshua is turning, the, the, yeah, Yehovah is turning back to the land of Israel because the fullness of the Gentiles is almost up. Uh, the fullness of the Gentiles is almost complete. So once the Gentiles are complete, that's the, 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 the church, they're raptured up, and then the Lord turns back to the children of Israel. But when 
their Messiah arrives, they're going to reject their Messiah because they will not recognize him the same way Joseph's brothers did not recognize him. And so when they reject Yeshua at the beginning of the time of Jacob's trouble, Yeshua will curse them. He will curse the earth, and that is what will, will signify the beginning of the seven trumpet judgments, which will last through to into the time of Jacob's trouble. And after passing judgment, Yeshua will leave and return to his lair, return to the heavenly Yerushalayim, although he will give them the impression that he has been killed by the false prophet, Isa, which is the great delusion that the Lord will give to them because they refuse to accept the truth, which is Yeshua. So this is the reason for the time of Jacob's trouble, is because they will once again reject Yeshua. And they will turn to the false prophet, Isa, Behemoth, and the Antichrist, Leviathan. Isa and the Mahdi. And they will label our Yeshua Al Masi at the Jah. So this is what Yeshua will say to them. So I shepherded the flock marked for slaughter, that's Yeshua, who will shepherd the children of Jacob particularly the oppressed of the flock. Then I took two staffs and called one favor and the other union, and I shepherded the flock. In one month I got rid of the three shepherds. The flock detested me, so they will detest Yeshua. And I grew weary of them and said, I will not be your shepherd. Let the dying die and the perishing perish. Let those who are left eat one another's flesh. Zechariah 11 verse 7. To nine. So they will reject Yeshua and turn to the God of Islam. As you can see, the Islamic Jewish flag here flying over the newly built temple because the temple will be rebuilt, would have, would have been rebuilt by this time. And as we carry on, you can see out of the temple will come the false prophet Isa in his flying craft, the hood hood, which is a, a bird. And he will come out and go after the Antichrist, our Yeshua, the Al Messiah the Jah. And um as you can see at, at this point I suspect um Turkey might be a base uh, for this Islamic incursion because on this aircraft you see the flag of Turkey. Okay. And um, of course, at this point, the Malhama would have taken place, the conquest of Constantinople would have taken place, and Turkey would have become a, a much more militant um, Islamic nation as you can see from the conversion of the Turkish flag to the black flags from Khorasan. So, out of their base will come the Prophet Isa. And as you can see from this scene, he is depicted as killing the um, Antichrist, destroying the Antichrist system. So he plunges his sword into the eye above the pyramid. So this is speaking of the destruction of the Jah, the destruction of our Yeshua. By Isa. And basically this is what would be happening at that time. Yeshua will say, For I will be like a lion to Ephraim, 
like a great lion to Judah. I will tear them to pieces and go away. I will carry them off with no one to rescue them. Then I will return to my lair until they have borne their guilt and seek my face. In their misery, they will earnestly seek me. Hosea 5 verse 14 to 15. This is when Yeshua will leave. Although, not before he gives the gives them a, a great delusion or sends them a great delusion, making them believe that he has been defeated by the false prophet Isa. And this is when this passage will find fulfillment. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan as the Antichrist, Ramachdi, and the false prophet. With all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 9 to 12. So, of course, it's depicted here as the world now has peace, that Jal has been destroyed, that our Yeshua, they accept the Islamic God, and uh, all is hunky-dory, according to them. Of course, they the uh, they will have a cordial relationship with the Antichrist until halfway into the time of Jacob's trouble, when he will invade the land of Israel. He will uh, slaughter people, uh, take the children into captivity. He will walk into the temple of God, sit in it, and proclaim himself to be God. So of course, that's the Kaaba, and uh, everything is depicted as being you know, hunky dory and and peace. Islam will bring peace to the whole world, according to them. So, the long and short of it is the great delusion spoken of by God is the deception that will be brought to the world, the deception that will claim that our Yeshua is Al-Masih Dajjal, the Antichrist. And that is what is depicted here. Now, I'd like for you to go to a website called it's, um, discoveringislam.org discoveringislam.org and it gives you all the information you need to know about the Dajjal that is our Yeshua they tell you everything about him they tell you about what will happen before he comes they tell you the year uh, when he is likely to arrive they tell you uh, based on our numerical analysis of the Quran, Hadith, and Arabic words for our End Times book, we believe that a Dajjal or evil person will appear in the beginning of the first phase of the End Times. This will trigger the emergence of the Mahdi in 2022, near the end of the first phase of the End Times. The last Dajjal is likely to appear. That's Yeshua. There you see. They know the year. This will trigger the descent of Prophet Jesus Christ, that's Isa, from heaven. Okay, and this is this. They say some of the Jews are expecting two messiahs for them in the end times. They refer to first Messiah as son of Joseph, that's Messiah Ben Joseph, and the second Messiah as the son of David, that's Messiah Ben David. 
Christians are expecting two witnesses in the end times. They tend to expect one of the witnesses to be Elijah or Elias. So the 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 people we are expecting they refer to as the Jals, deceivers, liars. So the first the Jal Messiah in the end times will probably falsely claim to be the son of Joseph of the Jews and Elijah of the Christians. Do you see that? He may claim to also be paving the way for the Shia Mahdi. The first Dajjal Messiah will probably not claim to be God, whereas the last Dajjal, son of David, is likely to claim to be God. That's Yeshua. Do you see? Our Yeshua is their Dajjal. And our Antichrist is their Mahdi. The last Dajjal may also claim to be the Shia Imam Mahdi. So it's, they just confuse it. They turn it upside down. You turn it upside down. I advise you to go to this site and and read. There's a lot to, to get from, from this site. It tells you what they think. It tells you uh, the signs before the arrival of the Dajjal. Here, the Malhama al Kubra, the Great War, that's the Red Horse War. Okay, uh, the conquest of Constantinople. Okay, after which is when the Dajjals will appear, that's Yeshua, and uh, the two witnesses. tells you about the Dajjal's parents, it tells you about the Dajjal's physical description, according to them. It tells you um, how the Dajjal will be deformed. His eye, one eye will be like a bulging grape. Of course, this they get from the book of Zechariah, where God tells our Lord Jesus to take on the appearance of the false prophet, to take on the appearance of the of the foolish shepherd, the worthless shepherd, which is um, Azazel, the goat. That's the reason why during the uh, Day of Atonement, you have two goats. Uh, one is the Lord's goat, and one is the wilderness goat. The wilderness goat is taken out of the wilderness, and it was supposed to be tied and left in the wilderness, which symbolizes uh, Azazel. Azazel tied and bound in Judah, and Yeshua is the Lord's goat, who is the sacrifice for atonement. So it tells you when the Antichrist will come. Uh, it tells you it will come after the... It says, while they are like that, a rider will come to them and say, you are here, but the Dajjal has taken your place among your families, but it will be false. So whoever listens to the scholars regarding that, then he will stay there along with the spoils that he won. And as for others, they will depart, and the Muslims will build mosques in Constantinople and invade the lands beyond it, until the Dajjal comes out in the sixth year or the sixth month. Uh, al Malhaba al Kubra, the big battle, that's the uh, Red Horse uh, Red Horse War, conquest of Constantinople, and the coming out of the Dajjal, the Antichrist, will occur within a period of seven months. So, the Imam Mahdi arrives on the 10th of Muharram, which is, uh, I think, the 18th of August. 
and Yeshua will arrive on the 1st of Elul, which, is, which I think is the 27th through the 28th of August 2022. So, if the Malhaba al-Kubra happens um, around that seven months before the emergence of Yeshua, uh, seven months before that will bring us to January, the end of the end of January. So according to them, the Malhama al Kubra will take place will around any time from the end of January. Uh so it tells you tells you more. The the so the, the, basically they are uh, Yeshua is there Dajjal, al Masih at Dajjal, they portray our uh, Yeshua as the Antichrist. Okay? Uh, and then they tell you, of course, how the Dajjal will be killed. It tells you about the tribulation, the trials and tribulations caused by Dajjal. Okay? It tells you, it, it tells you about this deception that they will bring. It says, uh, the the Jal's trickery, deception, and supernatural acts. Two angels resembling two prophets. That's the the witnesses, the the, the, the two witnesses, uh, um, Moses and, and Elijah. One on either side will accompany him. That that's of course when Yeshua returns, the witnesses will would have been announcing to the children of Israel that Yeshua was on his way. So when he arrives, the two witnesses will basically say that this is this is Yeshua. He is the real uh, Yeshua. Okay? However, according to this, listen to this, one on either side will accompany him. This will be to test mankind. Hence the Dajjal will ask, Am I not your Lord, God? Do I not give life and death? One of the angels will reply, you are a liar. So they're claiming that one of the witnesses will say that that Yeshua is a liar. However, nobody will be able to hear this reply besides the other angel. Do you see the, what they're trying to do here? The second angel addressing the first angel will say, you are speaking the truth. So obviously this is when the witness will be confirming because that's the whole point of the witnesses. They're to confirm that Yeshua is truly who he says he is. So they claim that one uh, witness will say you are a liar, and then the other witness will say yes to the other uh, witness. Yes, you're you're speaking the truth that he is a liar. But in actual fact, what will happen is that the witnesses will be confirming that everything Yeshua says is true. Everybody will hear what the second angel said and will think that an angel is testifying that that the Dajjal is Allah, God. Do you see? Do you see what they? Do you see what they're doing? Though in reality, this second angel was addressing the first and agreeing with his reply that the Dajjal is a liar. The Dajjal will cure those born blind. So, so who, 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 who gives sight to the blind? <laughs> yeah. Restoring their eyesight and curing lepers. Yeah. He will approach a Bedouin whose parents have passed away and will say to him, Will you believe that I am your Lord if I bring your parents back to life? The bed will reply, yes. The demons that are accompanying the Dajjal will assume the appearance of, see what they're trying to say? Who who can bring the dead back to life, if not for Yeshua? He did it the first time he came, and apparently he's going to do it again. But they will discredit everything that he does. They will say he's a liar. So you need to go to this site and read. You need to read and educate yourself about what they say about our Yeshua. The earth will uncover treasures at the command of, of Dajjal. Imagine, so who, who has the power to uncover treasures? Okay. And, and this is the great delusion that the Lord will give to them. It says, while the Muslims will be busy distributing the spoils, booty of war, resulting from the conquering Constantinople, Satan would shout that the Dajjal Antichrist has taken your place among your family or in your land. The Muslims would then come out, but will find that it is not true. And when they arrive in Al-Sham, greater Syria, the Antichrist will come out. That is our Yeshua, according to them. 
while while they the muslims are preparing to fight him and drawing up their ranks prayer time will come and then jesus the son of mary that isa will descend and join them in prayer when allah's enemies and the, the allah's enemy the antichrist that's our yeshua sees him jesus that's their isa uh it will dissolve just as salt dissolves in water so so, so basically this is where jesus has been rejected so he's he dematerializes and he basically ascends back to the heavenly Yerushalayim this is what they're describing as him dissolving as salt so if Jesus that's Isa were to leave him alone that's our Yeshua he that's our Yeshua uh, would melt to death anyway but Allah will have him that is our Yeshua be killed by Isa's hands and he Isa will show the Muslims the Antichrist that's our Yeshua's blood on his spear some narrations say sword hence the uh, destruction of the eye uh, the iPad Go 3 animation by Isa so this is how they claim Isa will die but it will just be a great delusion so that people will believe the lie that Al Mahdi and Isa are their saviors. Son of Mary, meaning Jesus, will kill the Dajjal, that's our Yeshua, at the door gate of Lud or beside Lud. Is you all that information? And it tells you the length of Dajjal's rule. Of course, Jesus will manifest on the earth on the first of Elul, and he will leave um, on the tenth of Tishri, uh, the Day of Atonement, when he will when he will pass judgment and leave. The day of atonement is the day this false, this great delusion will take place, where he will make it seem as though he's been defeated and killed by the prophet Isa, false prophet Isa. So from the first of Elul till the tenth of Tishri, you have forty days. Forty days. Long and short, their al at the Jal is our Yeshua. That is what is being depicted in the iPad Goat series. So, for those who do not go up in the rapture, please come to the realization that the one they will refer to as al at the Jal is in actual fact our Yeshua. Uh, I hope this has been a blessing to you. I would advise you to go to the website discoveryislam.org do as much reading as you can. Um, try and educate as many people as possible about this great delusion that's coming because it is coming. They will try to portray our Lord and Saviour as the Antichrist. So, I hope it's been a blessing to you. God be with you. And um, hang in there. Prepare as much as you can. It's going to be a bumpy ride until the 10th of Nisan, uh, 5782, when, we'll be, when we will be standing before the throne of Yehovah, about to witness the coronation of Yeshua. Thank you. And um, I'm a watchman. And uh, I'm blowing the horn as loudly as I can. And I'm out.